First of all, your name? Uh, Charles Ross. Charles, spell your last name? R-O-S-S. -S. Charles, tell me where you were, what happened, and what all you saw and heard. I was in my room, uh, sleeping right there. And, uh, uh, I was in my room, uh, sleeping, and then I thought I heard construction going around, or going off, because, you know, this neighborhood has been having a lot of renovation and construction lately. And then, uh, so I kind of ignored it. And then I, I heard sirens, so it kind of got me thinking, but I still kind of ignored it. Then I heard, like, two bullets whiz right by my room. And uh, my bed is right against the window, so I kind of just threw myself up. It's like I need, probably need to get away from my window and get into another room. So I uh, went to the living room. My roommate was there, and I uh, just asked him if he heard all the shots. He's like, yeah, it sounds like a gunfight. So we looked outside, and uh, we saw cops start coming, you know, uh, closing off all the street. And my roommate went outside, and uh, he uh, like just got into the middle of the street, and three more shots went off, and he just kind of ran back inside. And we were kind of watching it from our window right there. And uh, we just saw, you know, cops start moving towards the house. One of them was uh, like one of those motorcycle cops, and he was behind the door of a cop, or a cop car. And they started moving towards the house with, house with his pistol drawn, and uh, just heard more gunshots after that. But that's about you know all we heard. They had to be a good. I mean, I heard them whist like kind of whistling by pretty close. I mean, I I can't tell you how close, but it it was pretty close. Cause, I mean, you know, it's that distinct sound that bullets make when they go right by you. So, I mean, I can make it out pretty good. Did you ever find where they hit or anything? Excuse me? Have you looked to see if you found out where uh, they we, hit? Yeah, we looked for some bullets, but we couldn't find any. We, we figured they probably just went above the fence or something. Yeah. What's, I mean, what's make, how's it make you feel out here? I mean, you hear all this going on all around the country and now right here. I mean, it's shocking, really. I mean, I, I mean, this whole neighborhood's basically, you know, students. I wouldn't really expect it. Um, I mean... Yeah, it, it's shocking. Do you know the guy that lives in the house at all? No, I don't. Uh, he came because we ever talked to the other cop that had the street blocked off, and we, you know, we just let him know that bullets had gone by our house, you know, just see if it would help. And uh, so he told a de detective to come by, uh, and a detective came by probably about an hour ago or so, and just asked us what happened, you know, if uh, we found any bullets. Uh, but, and that's about it. So. Evening. Uh, uh, just as an update to our previous reports, I uh, just wanted to indicate uh, we, we're still working uh, feverishly to try and get this information uh, get information in on the investigation, trying to determine exactly what transpired. Uh, again, we're going to try and feed you the information as, as we can, uh, but currently the only information I can release at this time, uh, in addition to what we talked about previously, is the status of uh, two individuals that were undergoing surgery at hospitals. Uh, the female that uh, we referred to, the 55-year-old female we referred to, was uh, in surgery. Uh, she is now out of surgery. Her condition is, is listed as critical. Uh, she's in observation, uh, and the officer uh, that was uh, shot in the calf is, is uh, out of surgery and is in stable, so a stable condition. So uh, we again continue to monitor uh, these individuals to uh, make sure that we, they provide, we provide the assistance we can for them. Um, again, uh, it's, it's a very tough day for law enforcement, uh, and we ask that uh, you keep everyone that's been involved in this situation in this community in your thoughts and prayers uh, and we hope to bring you some additional information before 10 o'clock as to uh, some uh, more definite uh, identities of, of the shooter and things such as that so thank you very much as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ
Rodriguez. Rodriguez. Freddy, tell me about today. Where were you at when this happened? And what? Okay. <laughs> Where were you at today when this happened? And tell me what all happened. Well, we were. I was actually on the quad over by the Corps of Cadets. Uh, I was at work, and the uh, alarm started going off. And everyone at work thought it was like a fire alarm because they're renovating a new dorm on the quad. But come to find out, it was actually the alarms for Code Maroon. Uh, and so it was very interesting. When I looked at my phone, there was a shooting going on, like literally two blocks down the road. So we were just kind of like, what's going on? And then, you know, within like the next 15, 20 minutes, I get the, the next two Code Maroon saying, you know, they, the, the guy moved to Fidelity Street and then that they apprehended the guy. And then once everything unfolded throughout the rest of the day, I've come to find out three people were shot. So it was kind of interesting. How would everyone react? I mean, you were around your, your well, workers in Well, I mean, I guess like I said, we just didn't really know what was going on. It wasn't until I looked at my phone and saw the code maroon text that they were like, oh, you know, there was a shooting. And then we were just like, okay, and, you know, what's going to happen? And then once we found out there's actually an officer killed, that's when I guess it started to settle in. I was like, oh, there's a, 
someone killed. What about this mass tonight? Is it kind of bringing everyone together? Uh, it's very beautiful to see the solidarity between the community when, like, you know, in the face of evil, to see everyone coming together like that. So it's it's interesting to see. I don't know, I can't explain it, but just to see the, be the beauty that's, you know, even in the face of evil, some good can come out of it, even if it's not necessarily the good that we see, there's still some good, and, uh, and it's just like the solidarity, the people coming together to pray for those who have been affected for this. And Rodriguez, I'm going to spell your last name, R-O-D? R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z. F-R-E-D-D-I-E or Y? Y. Maureen, spell your first name. M-A-U-R-E-E-N. And your last name? Haggerty, H-A-G-G-E-R-T-Y. Maureen, tell me about today. Well, actually, t today I was on, in a trial and I was a member of the jury. And we, they said we would start in about five minutes and then they came in in five minutes and said, we have to cancel the trial because the College Station Police were supposed to testify and they've all been called back. But with the shooting, I mean, it's hard to know because I don't know all the information yet. But I'm just glad it wasn't on campus because I was first told that there was a shooting and multiple casualties on Texas A&M cam cam campus. And then I had phone calls from relatives, like in South Carolina and Michigan, wondering, you know, what had happened. Yeah, I got calls from Washington. A little bit of a word, huh? Yeah. Right. What, uh, what about this mass tonight? coming together, everyone coming together like Well, we this. said a special mass, a peace mass, to pray for those who, for the victims and you know, those who were killed and those who were injured, and hopefully the injured will do well and the families, we prayed for the families also. But I mean, we, as you saw, the chapel was absolutely full with standing room only. We have masses.